¿Qué pasa, campeones? ¡Colcheleros campeones! And ¡Welcome to the Churros! ¡Y Tácticas Podcast! ¡It is Monday the 25th! ¡And hay campeones! ¡Hay campeón de la liga! ¡Señores! Atlético de Madrid, welcome, welcome Colchoneros, congratulations to the Colchoneros, of course, because the league has finished, or in other words, se acabó, se acabó, se acabó, me it's over, bro, un año blanco, it's over, yo! La Liga is over, and we have a champion. It is Atlético de Madrid. So once again, congratulations to the Colchoneros for winning this season, the 2021 champion, the 2021 League champions. It was said right here on this podcast around what was it late early, late November, early December. It was something that was really never put in doubt. Neither okay, uh, it got hot on the under the collar. It gave Cules and Madridistas a little bit a shimmer of hope. It did come down to the last match, match day in the end, but the well-deserved champions of this season are Atlético de Madrid. Cholo Simeone winning his second league title with the Colchoneros, confirming his status as, of course, the already best and most successful coach in the history of Atlético de Madrid. And with that being said, of course, we have a champion of La Liga. We have a champion of the Copa del Rey. We don't know the champion yet in the Champions League. That will be decided. That fate will lies between Manchester City and Chelsea, the team that knocked Real Madrid out of the Champions League. So with nothing more to play for this season, there's no more football. The Euro Cup aside, of course. But that leaves Real Madrid in black. Un año en blanco. Qué triste es ser un blanco. No trophies for Real Madrid this season. The first time since a decade, I had to look it up myself. I thought it happened in this past 10 years more often, but officially the first time in a decade since Pe Pe Pellegrino is Real Madrid gone trophyless. Un año blanco, we say here in Spain. Um, and just when you think it couldn't get any worse, Luis Enrique <laughs> puts out his call-up sheet for the players that he will take all, or with him to the Euro Cup. And also there, no Madridistas are featured on the list. So they will have to watch the Euro Cup from the couch. Ouch! It's got to hurt being a Madridista these days. But one of the biggest and best of them all is my brother from another mother, Kian Sobani, here to dissect it all and to go into the details of how this league has finished, the call-up sheet of Luis Enrique as well. My man, Kian Sobani, how are you doing? With the new look as well, the Clark Kent look. It's a new Kian Sobani at the end of the La Liga season. How are you doing, Kian? I just wanted to see how long you would go. I, I wanted <laughs> to see how- I, I could've I, gone I, on. I honestly felt like if I didn't say a word, this that would have gone until like an, uh, 45 minutes. I would have I would have put a bet on it, but uh, you finally gave me the microphone. Thank you. It's always it's I could have gone on. I could have gone on. Your your intros are always crazy. I also think you're way <laughs> too excited for Atlético Madrid here. This is a little bit weird how much you celebrated that title. We got to give credit where it is due. Come on, I'll if we credit. have coaching I won't listeners, it. I'll give credit. I don't need to oh, throw a party. Oh, come on. Them. Come on. I celebrated for the Corchoneros. Honestly, I'm happy for them. His second season, the second league to, uh, title for, for Cholo Simeone, the, the, the Madrid, or Madrid, the Corchoneros as well, winning another league, making the league a little bit more exciting. I like that it's, you know, not a, a, a two dog fight, uh, not a two horse race, you know, uh, let, let, let the others, of course have their glory days as well and, and make life difficult for the big, the traditional big two in the, in the Spanish league. And, and you know, if, if, if it was Sevilla, I would have been singing praises as well for the Sevillistas. My God, what would have historic achievement that would have been. 
and of course anybody but Madrid. So if it had been Barça, I would have been celebrating Real Madrid. I would have not. In fact, you would have been doing the intro. So I gotta. We have to bask in this moment here and uh, be happy for Madrid also not winning on the final match day because yeah. it got close and things got things got you know I was nervous I was I was watching with a lot of uh, nerves I was not comfortable watching those matches take place you're on your own on that one that's your party your I, I'm not attending that party to celebrate anything that Atletico Madrid did today or this week I I will just say congratulations and I will say they deserved it and they had a good season and good for Spanish football okay. to have something different happening here <laughs> and a, a good title yes. race. It is, it is awesome that the league finally went to a three-team title race with Sevilla, Real Madrid, and Atletico Madrid. So it was nice to have three teams instead of a two. So, um, Oh, ow, 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 shots fired! <laughs> Give me some of those That's sniper glasses. Hunter, Give me hunter hunter glasses those on. sniper glasses. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> okay, oh, gosh. So- Come on, man. You know, we got to listen. Call me petty. Call me a sore loser. Call me whatever it is you want. But if you don't know, I was going to be excited for Real Madrid not winning the league and quedarse un año en blanco, going trophy list. And you haven't been listening to this podcast for the past four years or so. Yes, of course. I take great joy in the fact that Madrid didn't manage to pick that up. So, I mean, Kian even asked me, he said, who's doing the intro? And I said, man, step aside. Well, actually, your confidence kind dad. of surprised me a little bit because we were going by the parameters of whoever is ahead in the lead table. So I thought I was going to do it <laughs> again. I'm happy not to do that it diff- on, on the on differ. the podcast where we lost the league title. So no harm done. But I'm definitely a little bit surprised how of excited course. you are. But I can understand it, too. Honestly, I hey, we I, got listeners. But I'm not I'm not surprised that we lost the league title. So in my mind, we had already lost the league title before this game. So I, I really wasn't having many high expectations. Don't tell me there was no hope, Gian. Don't tell me when 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 Modric put it in, you're like zapping back and forth no. to the to the come on, no, there was no or, 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 uh, it, it, well, at, at least when when Atletico went down, I mean, listen. Uh, because even Atletico even down, then we were, but then we went quickly down in our game too. So then any hope yeah, that, that Atletico great. Madrid were dropping points, uh, I we were playing bad in the Villarreal game. Um, Thank God. So for there that. wasn't there wasn't much hope there. So um, it is. I mean, it's it's hilarious. The whole Spain national team and Luis Enrique thing, how that is kind of, I mean, a lot of Madridistas will actually tell you, like those who support Spain, and obviously yeah. there's quite a bit of them, especially if you're Spanish, uh, but a lot of a lot yeah. of Madridistas will have a soft spot for Spain naturally, right? But mm-hmm. a lot of them, a lot of them said, we're out, man. We're jumping ship. Fuck Lucho. We're out of here. We're going to, we're going, we're France. We're all team France now with Karim Benzema's return. So um well those are those are international madridistas surely not not yeah. spanish ones yeah uh i know uh lucas navarrete our uh our uh chief editor at at uh managing madrid he was saying you know i'm supporting france <laughs> he's from valencia wow so, um wow, so that wow. Was wow. A surprise. and then they yeah. get mad at catalans for not supporting I mean, uh i didn't the team so there was a video on that's interesting there was a video on twitter uh that thomas <laughs> uh-huh. ronquero Roncero. Roncero, or Roncero, okay. Roncero. Roncero posted um, where he was really emotional. I didn't even press play, and there was like millions of views. I already can predict what it was. It was just him, like basically going at Luis Enrique for this whole thing. So, all right. So let's talk about. <laughs> you, you I want to see that. that. I want to see it. I don't know if you want to get into it now, Lucho's decisions and stuff. Yes, we're yeah. going to give a breakdown, of course. So, no, no, yeah. it's more it's more important than Atletico's <laughs> title celebration. <laughs> um, no. Well, I mean, look, whether or not he left off, I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I was referring to the topic whether he left off players from Real Madrid on purpose or because he's an anti Madridista or, you know, uh-huh. whether Should you want to have the discussion no? now or. Do I believe that? Listen, uh, do I believe that Real, that that Luis Enrique has a dislike towards uh, Real Madrid from naturally from his being I like I, as a good culé? Uh, sure, I, mean, I don't. You know, I, I I don't like Real Madrid, and uh, like when we, we when we do our fantasy football or our trophies of the season on this podcast, you know, if it's between a culé and, and a madridista, more often than not, I'll choose the culé because, you know, of, of my colors. Or if I can leave a, a mid a Real Madrid player, maybe I'll do so as well. Would Luis Enrique do that? 
in given the his setting, getting given the fact that he's playing, you know, he's in his professional setting, he's playing for the Europa Cup, uh, the Euro Cup. And he has to choose the best of the best. I don't think so. He's got people, you know, around him as well. Uh, look, I think the ones that didn't come, in particular, Dani Carvajal. I don't Nacho. I read something that that there was not something personal, but but he felt he was uncoachable or didn't like certain decisions that he made that went against things that he had told him. But that's just what I'm saying. Uh, I think he would have taken Dani Carvajal had he been, had he been healthy. Sergio Ramos would have taken him, maybe I don't know. But the ones that he left out that were healthy, I think it's for good reason. Uh, I think injured ones are were injured. Yeah, I actually think most of the omissions totally made sense. Uh, I think omitting Asensio made sense. Omitting, yeah, omitting Isco definitely. made sense. Um, omitting Carvajal and Vasquez, he had to because they were injured. Um, had to. Omitting Ramos... Yeah, Lucas as well, right? So... I think... <laughs> I'm going to get an emotional I'm Kian now. Kian Roncero mode. But I don't Kian break Roncero. down crying. God damn it, Lucha, what is it again? You hate us. <laughs> Listen, I love oh. the Spanish national team. I've always been a fan. Despite not having real roots to Spain, other than the fact that I'm a Maradisa, my father used to live there before I was born... I love the country. I support them in every international tournament. Um, and naturally, they're the ones I always choose because Iran and Canada are, are just not good. I mean, Iran at least makes it to the World Cup sometimes. Canada, there's not much mm -hmm. I can really, uh, in a major international G tournament. Gave Argentina a run for the money, right? Remember that game? Messi broke our hearts, man. <laughs> but we were proud. That was a moral victory for us. To uh, yeah. to take Argentina. Hey, we even listen. We only took Spain pretty far in the in the last World Cup. Yeah, remember? <laughs> true, true. I was just thinking. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so I do. I love Spain. I really do. I cheer for them every international tournament. When they go out, I get a little bit sad because I want them to win. Um, I think Lucho, in in some weird way, there is a scenario. Like I don't think Spain is going to win this tournament. Although I do think also. They are. They can be a dark horse in this, and that they have a lot of talent, man. This is a really good team, hmm. despite the omissions Always. and stuff. They're a good team. Yeah. If there is a scenario where Lucho can get away with this in some ways, because in a weird way, the starting eleven is pretty damn good, right? It's hmm. it's the that's it's once we start getting into the discussion about the depths and the subs and who we didn't take and who we took, that's where it can get a little bit tricky. Now, in an international tournament where you're almost playing your starting eleven your best 11 every single game because you have to. It's a different story and you may not have to dig in too deep into your bench unless there's that last group stage game where maybe you've already qualified. Sometimes you're able to, yeah. to put the bench players in. Um, that doesn't always happen though. And certainly in, in Spain's recent history, they haven't really had that luxury anyway. They've had to win every game because they, they haven't been good enough. Um, exactly, yeah. I do think, listen, Regardless, right or wrong, you know, Marka and Ass are already have they've already written the articles. It's not even they're not going to write it in the future. It's already written. They've scheduled it. As soon as Spain lose a game or eliminate it, it's going to be all about the emissions and the fact that they've missed Sergio Ramos's leadership. That maybe maybe Laporte or maybe Eddie Garcia, if he plays, makes a mistake, and they're going to talk about Nacho being omitted. Uh, maybe Marcos Llorente plays right back because. That's a very big possibility with this lineup, which is insane. Um, and something happens in, in that position. And they've already written those articles. It's scheduled. I think that, like, yeah, absolutely. There, are, there are things that have to be explained. Like, he explained the Ramos thing as, like, I called him and I told him. And, and look, he hasn't been playing much. But by that logic, and, and none of what I'm saying is new right now, because I think everyone basically has already seen the arguments against this and that it's very clear. If the parameters for not taking Ramos was because he didn't play much, well, there's two quick counter arguments against that. One is um, Eric Garcia didn't either. <laughs> and the second one is you have two spots open. You didn't take. You took 24 instead of 26. So now maybe he now maybe he felt that Ramos I didn't is aware that. <laughs> yeah. Now, now maybe he That's felt funny. he felt that Ramos is too big a figure to take and to bench. Like it's the Raul problem, right? Bigger that figure. Aragonés like mm -hmm. could have te technically taken Raul and not play him, but even that idea maybe would have caused problems. 
his presence, right? So not taking him, okay, I get it. Now, I personally, in my opinion, despite Ramos being slow, slowing down and, and, and coming, coming from these injuries, in my opinion, he's still your best defender. Um, and his Whoa. experience brings a lot to the table. I get the arguments against what I'm saying, though, but it's just my opinion that I would have taken him and started him. I think he's still great. Um, the one that is more puzzling to me in a lot of ways is the natural omission because Luis Enrique has gone to, I mean, you brought up maybe there's a personal thing. Person, look, if, if Luis Enrique can make amends with Jordi Alba, if, if Didier Deschamps can make amends with Karim Benzema, I don't know about any, any beef that lingered between Nacho and Luis Enrique. That's news to me. Just make it work, man. Like if I don't, I don't, I trust Nacho way more than Eric Garcia. Nacho was arguably the best defender, central defender Spain had in La Liga. You know, now Laporte enters the discussion, so that there's that. But what? oh, sorry, Pau Torres is clearly number one. I, I, my apologies. So Pau Torres and Laporte, sure, number one, number two. But after that, I don't know if there's anyone, any Spanish defender who could, who could uh, outperform Nacho this season. So I, I just think it's crazy. And really, really, the fact that you're putting Marcos Llorente, one of the best attacking threats that Spain have as a right back, because the only other option is Adama Traore. That worries me. I don't. I don't know. So, um, I, I I'm not sure what's in his head. But I would like him to at least explain the 24 to 26. Maybe he thinks that since you can't even take 26 players to each game, it's pointless anyway. But what about the camaraderie? What about you know the the Pepe Reina of the past, the guy who didn't play but was like the hype man? You know what I mean? Like yeah, stuff. It's important to me. So I I'm um, I'm disappointed. If if he would have accepted that role you know if uh he would have accepted that kind of uh, position within the team where he can assume that he's not going to play and um he's not going to be a disturbance or uh, bump heads bump egos with lucho or other players then yeah i think he you know he would have added value <clears throat> to that team to get some sort of you know peña growing and 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 have some uh, group therapy sessions or you know team building sessions let's say where where he kind of leads the huddle perhaps sure I don't know if that's that's Sergio Ramos at this point in his career when he's you know fighting for a contract of two years and demanding similar salaries and my point is is that I don't know if, if Ramos is willing to step into the or, or back ra rather uh, behind the curtain and let the other actors you know take the glory and him just be the dude behind the scenes I don't know I don't know I don't know Ramos personally I don't know what he's like in the dressing dressing room uh, Lucho would have a much better idea and, and I feel that they he you know would have talked to him about this uh, which I think he admitted right and 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 who's to say that Ramos himself wouldn't prefer or didn't prefer just sitting this one out after hearing from Lucho, Luis Enrique, that, look, you're not going to have the minutes. Uh, these are my guys. And, you know, you can either chill and get ready for your new season, wherever that, that may be as well. Right now, his future is in incognito, right? Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with Ramos. So he's got a lot of shit to sort out. Maybe he's got to pack some bags and move city. I don't know. Um, look for new schools for his kids, etc. Um Ramos leaves me less perplexed as well as, you know, Nacho, I, I get your points, you know, and, and, and when I talked about bias before, obviously with Garcia, knowing that he had that for Pepe wasn't uh, uh, one of his go-to central defenders, knowing that he played less, I'm very excited to, uh, to do see him play. Obviously it's a position that I'm extremely keen on seeing uh, talent, erupt and and um take a step into the limelight he's got this is the best stage you know before his arrival at barca once that you know becomes official and and 100 confirmed we're in need in dire need of central defenders i'm can't wait to see him uh in that position during this tournament in the euro cup so uh i don't have any beef I have questions, I have doubts, but again, it's not because of Madrid has been included, yes or no. I think more of a conversation and debate can be held with the likes of your Yago Aspases, um, you know, 
top assist provider, goal scorer for Celta time and time again, uh, you know, fighting for, for Pichichi races, uh, uh, not necessarily as close as maybe others wanted to be. But, you know, when it comes to putting goals into the back end for his team and providing assists, being involved in the in the offense, uh, creating goal scoring opportunities, Yago Aspas is one of those guys. Uh, he is the guy uh, for his team in Celta. And clearly, you know, Lucho felt like uh, felt that your 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 Moratas and and Dani Olmos were a more adequate of a choice. And and I see, you know, again, like I said, I have more of a pickle or or something to talk about and debate about when it comes to that. Uh, I think you could have gotten more production from from. Aspas, but we're, this was also coming. I, th I think we felt that he started to lose confidence in Yago Aspas in his most recent call-ups, where you know he, he didn't include him. So, um, and Morata has given him some very good production in his, in his recent games as well. I mean, he was uh, very good. What was it against Germany? Um, you know, you can you can. <sighs> That you know, look, Gerard Moreno is there, which for me was a must, and all the other ones really were more up for debate. For me, you had to include Gerard Moreno, and and I imagine that he will be the starter as well, uh, most of the time. Yeah, um, I so here's, I mean, the other one that we should mention that's there that again, Nacho is just way better than him is Diego Llorente, who I just don't. I, I really have never been that impressed with. And I certainly mm -hmm. think he's way inferior to Nacho. I, I, I want to circle back to a couple things. So one name that isn't here because he just really, I mean, he hasn't played in his fitness and all that. And obviously his, uh, his devastating injury, Ansu Fati, who, uh, you know, we, he, he had the, at least one, but I, from I'm going by some memory now. I should have looked at the note, my notes, and my and the the results from earlier. But remember, he had a he had a, at least one really great debut for Spain, and look right at home. And obviously, he was looking good for Barca too at the start of the season. And one thing that he brought to the table that you just don't have now without him is his incisive dribbling. And I don't think there are many, if any, people in this squad that can replicate that. And this is what also concerns me about who's putting... Ansu Fati. Ansu Fati, yeah. And this is what yeah. concerns me a little bit about having Marco Sirente at right back is that I think if you're not going to have the incisive dribbling and line breaking of, of Ansu Fati, Marco Sirente is one that can come close to replicating down the right side. And mm. so, but I, I do think now all of a sudden, Ferran Torres and even Adama are going to be used now. Um, to to kind of compensate for that lack of dribbling that Ansu Fati would have provided, I I love the midfield. I mean, um, you know me; I'm a huge Thiago fan. I I think he's arguably, I mean, he is one of the best central midfielders in of the past few years, and I love what he does. I love his composure. I love his ability, his technique, everything. I think he can really help with the tempo of this build up, and he hasn't been that involved in the past, mostly because of injuries. And I hope he can get integrated too, and. Um, Gerard Moreno is, is is lethal. I also do question the, you know, I'm not a huge, I'm not hugely disappointed with Aspas being left out. I understand the best, the greatness of his season, but obviously he's better than Sarabia. Seasons. Seasons, sure. I mean, especially this season, he was he was fantastic, especially earlier on the season. But um, Sarabia is not someone I think I would have taken over him. And well, and he's and he's a sub for PSG, but I mean, if we remember the Sarabia from, from Sevilla, I get it, you know. Last season was or was it two seasons ago already? I don't know, but he was phenomenal his last season in Sevilla, yeah. But again, I mean, based on Lucho's criteria and logic of like current form and have you been playing and all this stuff, it, it doesn't add yeah. up, it doesn't compute. Yeah. Um, Canales yeah. is the other one who who had a shout here, Mikel Marino, yeah. another notable issue, a mission, but again. Part of me wonders True. how much of this even matters because how deep is he going to go in this tournament? That's the that's the thing. Yeah. So yeah. like, how much deeper are you going to go than Busquets, Rodri, Pedri, Llorente, Thiago, Coque, and even Fabian? I don't know. If, like, you're not going to go much deeper than that to start bringing in the Canaleses 
and uh, and the Merinos, if and the Saul who was omitted. So it, I, part of me thinks that this doesn't really matter as much as we think. But the glaring ones are the ones that will eat up the playing time, and that is who's going to play right back. And if something happens to Pau Torres and Laporte, you have to start going into Garcia and <clears throat> and uh, and Diego Llorente territory, which does concern me, especially with so many lethal attacks in this in this in these upcoming Euros. The thing is with with Diego, like in the case of Diego Llorente, I remember he even called him up when he was injured for Real Sociedad. He was still playing for them. And he just seemed like one of those guys que era un fijo for him. He was like a must um, in every call up of, of Luis Enrique for the national side. And like ever since, you know, his move to Leeds, and I don't know if that's your case as well, Kian, but, you know, I just haven't seen him play as often. So it's for me, it's hard to say, to, to really argue with uh, Luis Enrique's decision to pick him over, you know, your boy Nacho, for example. Um, and in, in the case of Laporte, of course, I mean, that's like, uh, that, that's only comparable to like a signing, uh, a signing for a club. Like that one just fell on his lap and he must have been like, oh, you know. Excited to wonder, have, <laughs> yeah, and I <laughs> and I do wonder if a great quality central defender just landed in your lap. If he didn't, if that didn't happen, maybe Nacho would have been taken, or at least he would have had not much hmm. of an excuse to not right. take Nacho at that point. Yeah. Because if you don't have Laporte, I mean, yeah. there's also the argument about you know Spain have left side, left center backs and right center backs, and you know, I a lot of people feel strongly mm-hmm. about like they should only play on left side or right side. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't feel that strongly about it. Um, I know somebody yeah. like Pep Guardiola, who's much smarter than me, does feel strongly about it. Deschamps is another one. But I mm. do think um, Nacho is versatile enough to play on both sides, like, which makes this even more, more appalling to me. So that's where we are. It's pretty that. crazy, though. I mean, all of this is, it's, uh, what do you think of Dani Olmo? I mean, again, him playing for Leipzig is not something I see on a weekend basis. So um, was that, did that one leave your, Leave you puzzled. Which one, sorry? Dani Olmo. Dani Olmo has been great for Spain. I have no, no quarrels with that decision. Like, you know, I, and again, I don't get to see him at club level, but anytime I've seen him for Spain, I've been impressed. So I have no problems with that decision um, at all. And, and again, I, I think this attack is pretty damn good. I mean, when you look at it, Gerard Moreno has been on fire this season. Um, I do wonder how Luis Enrique will kind of shape the attack, whether he'll go. I also think Adama is actually going to get a lot of playing time in this tournament. I could be wrong, but just given that. Adama is interesting, man. Set, yeah. And, and and people forget, and and I might be wrong on this one, but I seem to remember that he, uh, Lucho actually coached him in Barca B. Hmm. So, yeah, he, you know, he, he has experience of coaching him. So I'm, I'm pretty excited for him to be included there. Now that we got kind of the the selection out of the way, we can circle back to the conspiracy and stuff. Uh, I don't know if there's <laughs> can I can I set this one up because I remember not very long ago, Kian, not very long ago at all, we were talking about how the selección, the majority of of the Spanish national side were Madridista, Madri, Real Madrid players, and there were zero Barca players. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. And now it's ended up with no Real Madrid players and three Barca players. How the turntables, my friend. Um, <laughs> the turntables. I, well, yeah, go go to that conspiracy. That was just a setup for you to take it away. Roncero. Kian uh, Subani Roncero edition. I have, again, maybe Roncero, maybe Roncero's video was this whole thing about it's about time Lucho stepped up and showed his balls because all these Real Madrid players suck. Maybe it's not, maybe I didn't watch the video. So I don't want to say what Roncero said. I don't know. I wouldn't say I just it. assume I, I predicted that it wasn't that. Um, I'm not a conspiracy guy. I'm kind of throwing this to you because you're the ones who like to talk about aliens and UFOs and referees and classicos and stuff like that, right? That's your territory. So I'm going to throw, I'm throwing you an alley-oop here. Uh, Luis Enrique, is not a popular man at the Bernabeu. Most people <laughs> who have an opinion about him, it's usually not positive. It's either neutral, like my my good buddy, Eduardo Alvarez, who's been a associate for a long time. I remember having a long conversation about him, about Luis Enrique with him. And he was saying, look, a lot of us mm. just don't have any opinion on him. He's just like 
well, even when he left, it was like, okay, see ya. Like we never connected with him. And then there's the other people who just don't like him because obviously he went to Barcelona and um, he went <laughs> that would when be he the scored vast against majority. us in the Clasico. He well, yeah. now has not called up Show any of shirt. our players. He, he did seem to have a good friendship with Sergio Ramos from what I saw. There was something nice there. There was something yeah. nice brewing there. That little that little chest bump in his very first call up. I don't know. That was an image that went around. Uh, Lucho and like sneaks up on behind Ramos. Yeah, and, like, that's the one like, I thought about. Yeah, yeah. That's the one. So yeah, yeah. that's the moment. Yeah. So, do you? What do you think... want me to say? This is so. Yeah, sorry. I I know. Here's here's what I think. I think that in most years it's almost inexcusable and impossible to not call up a Real Madrid player. I think this year he was like, if there's ever a year I can get away with this, <laughs> it might be this one because Ramos is injured. Nacho was like, you know, they'll get mad about Nacho, but they'll forget about it soon. Um, and everyone else is injured. So I think this is the year I can finally show my true colors and it'll be subtle and no one will, and people will get angry, but they'll forget. <laughs> I think it's like, I think he he's like a it. closet. In the in, <laughs> if you if you like if if like the CIA raided his house and they open up his closet, <laughs> there's like these yeah. like big maps of like, and there's like all the Real Madrid players, and he has an X on them, and he's throwing darts. <laughs> so I think it's, it's like, like not a good. full on con conspiracy, but I think it's like it's like a just like a petty, like a little aggressiveness behind the scenes that like, yeah, this is the year I got away with it. You know? <laughs> and he was, in fact, he came, he came to the Barca offices after, and we all got the high five and we're like, yeah, Lucho, yeah. you put the cherry on the top, cabrón. Thank yeah. you. Hey! Blanco. No, it go, yeah, man, that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. Um, do you think I, like Ramos, Nacho, Asensio, Isco, Carvajal, and Vasquez are all sitting on a couch during the Euros and they're like rooting against Spain secretly? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I think so. I think they'll like post on Instagram, like congrats Spain. But then like behind the <laughs> yeah. scenes, it's like, fuck. <laughs> the famous meme with the the, the smiling mask, right, and the one yeah. tears behind. Uh, listen, you bring up a very interesting and entertaining uh, theory, conspiracy theory at that, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'll I'll take it. I I uh, I'll, uh, I love Lucho. I love me some Luch, some Lucho, some Luchito, and I'm I'm very pleased. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that you know, he put this uh, cherry on the cake for us, Kules. I don't. I don't I, look, I, I I said that in the beginning. I, I don't think it's anything personal. I think he's too professional uh, to let any of that petty personal club rivalry stuff get in the way, which I enjoy and and I partake in. But like I said, if you know, he is his. Uh, his his legacy, his reputation is on the line. And if he would have felt that the best players, if they were at Real Madrid and they could get him closer to winning a Euro Cup, which is uh, an incredible feat for a, 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 any manager. I mean, the, the his job is too um, fickle for that matter. I mean, the manager uh, manager's job they're very short. The, the lifespan is is very short. You get a very short amount of time uh, and time frame to achieve greatness in especially as, in, as a national coach. You don't have much time with the team to train to, to, to play. And then the, the in tournaments are so intense that you know if you're you're really your legacy as a manager and then you know, your 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 job as well because like I said it, it's so such a short time frame where you're a manager of a national side that afterwards you're expecting to get called up for clubs etc that he wouldn't risk his own you know potential professional career and the future of it based on uh club bias and and you know rivalries and stuff like that so you know again i think it's amusing i enjoy it and i'm gonna watch roncero's video and bask a little bit more in this moment because it's enjoyable but i don't you know he wouldn't uh i don't buy into it put it that way he wouldn't let this get an interfere with his objectives which is to win the euro cup which i forget like I said, you only which... believe in conspiracies if it's against barcelona of course because that's when they're real 
Those are the real, the true ones. So we're going to get to the bottom of this one day. Yeah. Well, anyways, this is going to be, <laughs> uh, we're going to be covering Spain. <laughs> gonna get used to this new look, this, this new Clark Kent sniper look, the Hunter, Hunter Sobani is, uh, tell the people why you're wearing these glasses. You're, you're not, you're, there's nothing wrong with your eyesight. You haven't been hunting in the backyard, shooting elk or tin cans, Yeah, but you're wearing them for been, a actually. specific reason. No, these oh, are, um, okay. these are purely for fashion. I'm just, uh, it's just to get some, uh, to flex a little bit. The ladies! Look. No, these oh, are blue light glasses. Oh, how with his new glasses? As I was telling Diego off air, these, I got these the past week or so, and they've changed my life. And I, now I, I have to wear them at all times when I'm looking at a screen. It, it has been the best thing ever. It, ha- it might be the greatest invention that I can think of, like better than iPhones, better than screens. Which makes no sense because I need this for the screens. So, uh, it my eyes are so just, uh, your phone as well. Phone. Anytime uh, you look at a screen, I basically always have them on because my life is behind the screen constantly, and I, especially during the pandemic. So you know, I'm, I'm excited to, you know, to not have to wear these because I really wish that I didn't have to look at screens as much. But they've been amazing for my eyes. Way better. Yeah, I highly recommend. For, I made a YouTube for video about it. The listeners. Thing. I uploaded oh. a video on my YouTube channel and I talked about these. Um, how, oh, how you much did? they've impacted my life. Yeah. Just before we recorded Get this. some of that, that sponsorship money. Well, now we, you've painted a beautiful image. So for, for the listeners who are not watching, Kian uh, has uh, adopted some glasses, some screen glasses that protect his eyes and make him sleep better at night. And uh, now we know as well that whenever Kian is watching porn, he'll be doing so with glasses on. I usually for porn I take them off the screen. Yeah, I usually take them off. Out of respect. Out Out of of respect. respect. Yeah, it's uh, (laughs) a that's a very sanctified, dignified time, and I I don't. don't, (laughs) All right, so (laughs) highly recommend. (laughs) Highly recommend. Um, (laughs) On your glasses. But (laughs) I well, this will be on YouTube. Protect your eyes. This will be on YouTube, so not only will people see uh, the glasses if they want to, but they'll also see what you what the action you just made. Um, I also want to can we because we don't have that much time left because I gotta go pick up my kids soon. I do want yes. to talk about um, Barca transfers because um, mm. now it's really heating up and pretty much all but officially confirmed. Uh, Depay, Eric Garcia, Wijnaldum, and Aguero. Okay, so we already talked about. Depay and and um, and Aguero on I think it was on the Friday pod so I don't I don't think we should repeat it here. Yeah, all right. Uh, go to patreoncom okay. tacticas for the Friday pod. I want to talk to you about Wijnaldum though, and hmm. I I stand by this. I think I think while these are all decent transfer, I mean Depay is a fantastic player. We talked about his fit um, and how he might hinder the development of Dembu's and. And Fati and and Aguero may be obviously older, but uh, he fits the profile of what you might need, especially if you can get back to, to some goal production. Why now that I feel like fits into the category again? Because I think why now is a fantastic player. He fit the passing profile fits with Barca really well. He's a great passer. He's a good ball carrier. He's hmm. a good progressive passer. Uh, I don't think he's going to help you that much in like a the defensive midfield role because that's not what he does. And that's obviously Busquets and De Jong has been playing a little bit deeper now too. But I do wonder what it means for Pooch. Hmm. I just feel, I, and again, I'm not a Barca fan. I care little about the development of your players. But no, I think, I would, it, I think that very... Pooch, should, Pooch should get more minutes. And I think that Pedri mm-hmm. is awesome. And, you know, you only have De Jong and Busquets. De Jong can play that role. I, I, I suppose if you can get, is Pian, what's happening with Pjanic and Coutinho? Those, those are two big question marks. So as long, if you can get rid of Pjanic and Coutinho, then this makes more sense to me because at least you've uncluttered the position a bit. But what are your thoughts on Wijnaldum? And obviously you're Dutch, so you have, I thought, you're a little bit, going to be a little yeah. bit biased towards him, I assume. Well, I, I thought that we talked about Wijnaldum as well. Um, and, and I expressed exactly the same concerns um you know given his age given the fact that uh, he's coming into a position where we have booking already i think it's uh, concerning to say the least 
that that he will also hinder the development of uh, the players who I feel deserve more minutes. Your Puchus, Elish is another um, one. Elish Moriba, who you could argue, okay, he is a media punta originally, so he does play in that 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 more attacking role, uh, but he's seen somewhat as a as a help uh, as well for Busquets and 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 your De Jongs. Although again, his his position is more attacking, so yes, uh, Elish Moriba should be involved in that conversation as well. At the same time, we still have Pjanic. Um, you know, there is an overbooking in that in that central midfield position where you wonder if Vijnaldum, as good as he is and as solid as he is and uh, as good of a relationship he has with Kuman, uh, which reportedly he does. And of course, they know each other from the the Oranje days, the Holland, the Dutch national side days. You know, what, how how will he fit, or not so much how will he fit, but how will he, how much will he be used by Kuman if Kuman stays or the next coach, and will he hinder the developments of uh, the younger players? And and of, obviously, Okules are very we're very eager to see Ricky Puch get more minutes. Pjanic has not at all been used. There's a lot of talks around him whether he will you know maybe go back to Serie A maybe even go to back to Juventus I don't know we will see it'll be an interesting summer but it does seem that Vagnaldum is is heating up at this moment so it's like um does that mean that Kuman stays does that mean that Puch will leave does that mean what does it mean I mean a lot of things need to be settled I think before uh the arrival of Vagnaldum and um or if he does come, at least maybe it'll set off a, a, you know, a chain event uh, or a chain reaction, rather, uh, a chain of events. And um, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't have so much of a, a, a qu like a, a, a pickle or beef, let's say, with the choice of player coming in. Uh, everything you said, you know, I sign on, good passer, good vision, uh, good physique as well, strong, uh, fast on the ball and decision making as well. He does have his downs where he doesn't impress whatsoever. He does have his moments where also like Pedri, for example, he's in front of goal and his, his finishing is not that what you want of a player in such an attacking position uh, or days where he's just off. So... <laughs> You know, and then the age. So there are there are question marks with regards to the signing. We'll see when it happens, when it materializes. And uh, I mean, the fact that he is Dutch and will come to Barca. I mean, that's you know, that's that's pretty cool in the sense that you know we have another well, Dutchie on board. But I, I just hope that it will be valuable than anything, more than anything. It's the yeah. Dutch Revolution, and De Ligt was another one that I saw reports today. I don't know what the validity yeah. of that one is. That like yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you apparently he's yeah. He's unhappy and he kind of, he's been talking with Frankie and Frankie's like, well, it's fucking, you know, great over here. <laughs> no, it's trouble free over here. No. Um, but yeah, apparently he kind of might have regret his decision, but who knows? Who knows? I don't know. Let's, let's not get into that speculation because that from a financial perspective, I just don't see feasible at all. I mean, you would have paid oh, 75 something million, 70 something million. So. Well, speaking of Dutch Revolution, yeah, it's it'll be it'll be funny if all of this happens and then Kuman gets sacked. Yeah, exactly. You right. Get Wijnaldum, mm -hmm. you get Depay, you get all these guys, and like, I mean, uh, um, yeah, no. FIFA should make a team that like takes on all of the bad contracts and the players that teams don't want, like, like just a just a team where like you throw Coutinho, Hazard, Bale, Pjanic. All these guys that clubs made mistakes on. FIFA should just be like, we'll take yeah. them, and then you make a super team of like it's like just the <gasps> the washed up slash overpaid superstars and see what they can do together. I'd love to see that. That should be the next evolution, like after the Super League. <laughs> Careful when, yeah, exactly. Careful mentioning the word super over here. Super team, super league. You know, might get canceled from Twitter or something. See, I'm going to see who cancels us. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm happy with uh, ending it there. So <clears throat> we gotta. So you, you and I have to come up with a plan for Spanish national team coverage during the the Euros. Okay, we will come up with a plan. We'll come up with a plan. Um, just like we always do. We always have something uh, good planned for these kind of tournaments. Sorry, I'm just pulling out my phone, not because I'm. Uh, impolite but because just for the colchoneros 
we started and we're going to finish with talking about your beloved club, <laughs> which we did zero justice to for this amazing feat. What are you of talking about? Winning. Your whole intro was one well, hour long. Dedication. I thought we were going to expand a little bit more and talk a little bit more about it. In any right, case, we it. did try to get, we did try to get, uh, no, I got to go. <laughs> I get, it's, it's, I, I'm no, what we're going to do baby. was we're going to have you in on next we, week. We were going to have you in on. For and, season and review for Cochineros. He sends his greetings, his loving greetings from Mala. He's uh, on holiday and deserves Enjoy, holiday for that matter. He couldn't make it. He wanted to come on a pod, but he's on holiday. So he sends his love and his well wishes to all the Cochineros celebrating and uh, basking in this uh, glorious time uh, and uh, for winning the second league in the coach in the Cholo Simeone era, I mean, fantastic. He's won so much. With I was looking at the trophies he's won earlier, Incredible. and you know, with the the the, the two uh, uh, Europa leagues, um, you know, the the, the Super Cup, uh, UEFA Super Cup winning, Spanish Super Cup, uh, Spanish Cup winning winner as well. Two leagues, one the best coach as well of the world. I mean, he's 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 just done a fantastic job. Like him, you know, love him or hate him, like his style of football or not. He's the best Aleti coach in history. And um, so those I send guys... my congratulations, my congratulatory message over to. So those of you guys who are not watching this podcast on YouTube, um, Diego just showed us a, a screenshot of what Ewan sent him. And he's on a beach in Malaga with, uh, with a beer. And uh, he looks like he's having a, a nice time. So congrats, Ewan. Congrats to all Colchoneros uh, in all seriousness. Great season. And um, thanks for making La Liga competitive. And Real Madrid and Barcelona have some catching up to do. They got to they gotta be better than they, they were. Got work to do. All right, Diego. Yeah. This was fun, my friend. We'll be back on Friday over on Patreon.com slash Churros y Tacticas. Yeah. And uh, we will see you guys inside over there. Thank you. Take care, Diego. Sign up. Join us on Patreon. Get unfiltered goodness. Churros!